Okay, so stop the last uh, video recording because as I was about to show everybody the new um, creating a new zero chart sub instance for a new chart book, I opened it up, showed my account number, etc., and uh, didn't want to do that. So anyway, the last video is cut off, so this is part two. Uh, so here in part two, I'm going to show you that um, you know if you want multiple chart book spaces, let's say you have multiple monitors, right? and you don't want to be dragging around charts and then um, you know resizing them you know, maybe you want to use something like uh, uh, tiling all the charts multiple charts um, you know one way to do that is to create a, a new Sierra chart book sub instance and so all you do is go to file you go to new instance and this will reload a completely uh, new Sierra chart sub instance with with its own graphics setting so it will not look like your main chart so one of the things you want to do is you want to um, copy the file folder uh, this uh, not the file folder you want to copy the file within Sierra chart uh, that keeps all of your graphics settings so what I would suggest you do as I don't want to open up all of those files and show you those files um, is Google um, Sierra chart support and how to transfer graphic settings from one instance of Sierra chart to another right something like that and Sierra chart shows you in their documentation step by step how to do that okay so that is extremely useful okay another thing that a lot of new users to Sierra charts don't know is that um, you know when you go into your studies right analysis you can access that by hitting F6 or in this menu so menu studies or like me if you're uh, changing studies all the time you can either add a button for it which I don't know it just takes up too much space for me. I had it on my right click menu. Okay, so studies. So let's say you're saving a bunch of studies. Okay, and you're like, well, I put all this time into this, and how do I save them as a study collection so that I can quickly add this collection to future charts? How you do that is you go here, right at the bottom, it says save studies as study collection. If it doesn't have a name already, you type in your name and then you hit save all and then it saves the, all of the studies in here um, to uh, like as a study collection. Okay, so as you can see, there's a bunch of studies in here that I have, right? So all you would do is hit save all and then boom, it's saved. So then you can go back up to analysis right and there are all your study collections okay and then you just simply click on them and it will boom it'll load all like those studies uh, into the chart so what was I using before uh, I think it was this one and one click and they're all in there so that is uh, really cool so let's say you have a study collection that you want to use on all new charts right how you would set that study collection as the default is you go into your global settings in your general settings okay and it's here in tab one general one go down here on the right side until you find this use default study collection for new charts pick the one you want and there you are since we're here if there are certain chart books that you want to open on uh, when Sierra chart starts up you add them here okay so you just simply go to add you'd find the chart book that you want right you see that and you can make Sierra chart add those studies on startup so going back to the new Sierra chart sub instance when so it what Sierra chart will do is it'll call 
like the first sub instance you open as like Sierra chart uh, sub instance two, and then it'll name the next one sub instance three and four. And I think it might go up to four as a maximum. I'm not exactly sure, but I uh, out of the box, I think it has those four files. Okay, so maybe maybe you could copy them and make more than four. I don't know. You need to look at the Sierra chart documentation for that. Um, but you would want to go into once you've uh, transferred over your global uh, graphics settings uh, like configuration so it looks just like your main Sierra chart instance you would want to go into uh, Sierra chart and uh, modify those settings for that sub instance that is open right go into the global settings the general settings and then uh, make sure you know you save a chart configuration that you like maybe it's like a 12 chart equity chart uh, with uh, you know certain commodities and you name it like equities and commodities or something and it's like you know 12 charts so equities commodities 12 charts you call it something like that and save that and then you know do your tiling and everything that you want to do and then save that chart book and then come here and add that so that it opens that chart book uh, on startup okay so make sure you do that for all of your sub instances um, another cool thing uh, is if you go into your global settings um, and you go into your so we're in global settings symbol settings okay and let's say there are only a few uh, ticker symbols that you're gonna be trading all the time for futures right or or maybe you just want to do uh, all the equities only you don't trade oil or anything like that or, or maybe you want to do them all like me like I you know put all my commissions in here so one of the things I find useful is I like to uh, have my uh, commissions calculated into my PL. so in here you would just type in ES right and then for whatever uh, routing you're using, make sure you're using, uh, you know, the right symbol symbology, I guess. Um, so in this case, for the E-mini, you know, it, you just have to kind of hit the parent symbol, and then, you know, as the months and contract uh, years change, uh, it'll apply uh, whatever you set for the uh, commission uh, for all forward contracts. Okay, so scroll down here in the settings for ES once you've selected it until you find the round turn commission so if your commission is a dollar 85 each side right that includes all exchange fees commissions through your broker you know the 10 cent for Denali or CQG per side everything right just a total uh, to get in and to get out so that's round turn enter that here right And make sure you hit use these symbol settings and new instances when started. So anyway, enter that in here and do that for all of your symbols. Okay. So then um, for the charts that you always use, go into your chart settings. You can, you can access that. Again, I have it on my right click menu, but chart, chart settings and go to advanced settings three tab and use symbol and go down here to the, like the third box use symbol commission settings in trade list and statistics make sure that's on okay so now one of the things you can do is okay first of all your dom if you have it set <laughs> uh, to calculate uh, PNL again that the whole PNL thing there's a lot to it so um, Make sure you read Sierra Charts documentation uh, for that. But uh, going back, um, you know, if you do set the PNL on and set it to use commissions, then it'll include it all here, right? And you can set it to be dollars or points or ticks, uh, your PNL, whatever, right? So this is a SIM account. And another thing. Uh, since you've set that is that you can go into 
uh, the trade activity log. Okay, so it's up here in trade. Trade activity log right here. You can access it through Control Shift A as well. Um, you might check your shortcuts. I have modified mine somewhat. I'm not sure if I have on this, but again. So one of the things you want to do is, you know, you'll be looking at the symbols, okay? And then you want to make sure you select the account that you want to run reports on. And then you want to come over here and set use commission, right? So mine set that way. And so your broker, your futures broker will send you uh, reports every day, okay? So if you have your commission set accurately for any symbol that you're trading, you can come in here, right? And I know that the cutoff every day is 14 o'clock. I'm in Pacific Standard Time. So uh, two o'clock, um, I use AMP futures. So at two o'clock every day, uh, that's the end of the trading day. Uh, and that will be included in the report for, you know, whatever they send me at night for the last, you know, 24 hours. So you can come in here and set you know, for SIM and all SIM symbols, you can set, I don't know, let's say uh, Thursday of last week to, uh, let's say Friday at, no, nope, sorry, did I just, let's see, the next day, Friday at 14 o'clock. Okay, so that would give me, um, you know, everything that traded at 6 p.m. Eastern time when futures reopen all the way to the next report. Okay, and then hit apply. And so there you go. All right, it'll show you your total profit and loss. Um, and then you can go up here and click on some of these other things, right? You can click on statistics. And this will show you all kind of really cool things right about how you how you traded um, it'll give you like run-ups and um, you know total number of trades you give you all your winning percentage percentages profit factors um, you know expectancies all kinds of stuff okay so this is super useful right you can look at chart stats right so if you had a certain kind of chart configuration, you were trading from that chart, you know, how did you perform, right? Things like that, okay? So um, I find that is kind of a cool tip as well. So anyway, if you guys like this um, or want me to do more of them, uh, just let me know. And if you could like, subscribe, share the videos and uh, you know, I don't make my videos look the most blingy or anything, but uh, I do try to pack them full of content. So maybe in the future I'll, I'll uh, get a video editor and do these a little bit more professionally. But for now, um, this is is what it is. I do this kind of on on the side and uh, to kind of help some of my friends out who are uh, getting into Sierra charts. So anyway, hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video and. Uh, Happy successful trading this next week. Take it easy.